Hello again, Timberwolves fans. Are you ready for the explosion of Timberwolves basketball? It is Tuesday, May 1st, 2012, or 2012, or whatever we like to call it. And this is episode number 76 of Timberwolves Explosion, which is available on thesportstuff.com and on iTunes. I thank each and every one of you always for downloading and listening to this show. Well, we're back. Yeah, it's been a little while, but... uh, Paladino Joey and Marcus the Forecaster are in studio once again, and uh, we're ready to rock and roll. Yeah, kind of like a rare time of year that we do one of these. Uh, This is not State of the Timberwolves. This is kind of uh, more of a playoff preview, playoff review, you know, type of deal, early first round situation. So this is kind of a unique situation, and we're very excited to be here today. Uh, And of course, Wolves Nuggets and stuff, Uh, lots and lots of Wolves Nuggets, (laughs) lots of information um, but yeah, State of the Timberwolves 2012 will be the next show that'll air in a little while, depending on what goes on, but, uh, usually that airs in June, uh, who, who knows, maybe we'll come behind the mic again if need be before then, we'll see what happens, but great to have Marcus Forecaster back in studio again. It's good to be back again. Absolutely, yeah, <laughs> gotta love that. So today, yes sir, playoffs of course, a uh, little... Briefly, yep, we got the Brooklyn Nets new logo. Oh, goody, we'll briefly talk about that. Um, All kinds of stuff going on. You got the Rondo, the Rondo bump. You got the Clippers making a great comeback. It's been an interesting playoff so far. Early start, and of course, well, we start with a very big topic. Because, well, what what team did we both pick to win the NBA title back in October? Do you remember? Or, Uh, excuse me, December. Go ahead. I picked the, the Bulls. I, I did, too. I did, too. Um, I guess we can't stick with that, can we? No. Interior cruciment ligament, or ACL, of course. Derek Rose, a ferocious player attacking the basket. Kind of a double, I don't even know how, how you how you describe it, but it's the, the way, you know, you drive to the basket, obviously you go off, the, jump fiercely to the basket, and tore his ACL doing it somehow. I'm. I don't know. I, I feel for Bulls fans. Yeah, with his speed and the way he stops. Mm-hmm. It, it was just bound to happen. I yeah, and you, you kind of. It kind of is that way, isn't it? He. I hopefully he doesn't have to alt, uh, change his style too much, but. This kind of thing does seem to happen with certain players. Just uh, shucks, Francisco Liriano of the Twins with his ferocious delivery on his pitches. He had Tommy John surgery, which is like an elbows version of an ACL injury, basically, for a pitcher. Uh, you had Blake Griffin tear his ACL in a preseason game a few years ago with his ferocious uh, style to the basket. It's it's unfortunate. I mean, man, could you imagine being a Bulls fan right uh, at the yeah. time? Or a or Chicago Bull. You're the game one. You're the number one seed in the entire league. And he's injured right away. <laughs> They're winning the game, too, but... Hmm. Source of debate, too. A lot of people saying, should Thibodeau have had him in the game? Should he not have? It's Yeah, hmm. I, I don't think he should have been back so early. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it was kind of a... They were... I mean, the game was pretty much out of hand. I guess the excuse was, or the talkers are, seems like... They want to. They want to say that. Well, you got to make sure the Sixers don't come back because they were making a slight comeback at the time. But uh, I'm kind of neutral on it. So, you, so you're leaning more of he probably shouldn't have been in the game. Yeah, he shouldn't have been. It's probably not worth it, especially you know they they were going to win, and they're definitely going to win the series, or were going to win the series. Excuse me. <laughs> Tonight's game makes you wonder. Yeah, it's a. So we're going to have a new prediction for the championship, but not quite yet. We're going to talk more playoff stuff first, because um, we got to we got to think over who we're going to pick now. Yeah, we got to we got to think it over while we're discussing, <laughs> right? No, it's one of those deals. Um, hmm. So, uh, man, how would you feel if you were a Bulls fan right now? I mean, with Rubio, I, I know how it feels. That's the thing. Yeah, with Rubio, we do know how it feels. It changes everything, doesn't it? Yes. Everything. I mean, it's like it all went up in smoke within a second. There he is, you know, involved late in a game. 
obviously the Wolves needed Rubio in in that case because I was like, oh, they were like tied with the Lakers at the time. But yeah. Rose, a little bit different situation. I guess the whole thing is, yeah, they were trying to stomp on the Sixers' throat, so leave Rose in for the time being to put it away. But unfortunately, accidents happen, as they say. Mm. It was like uh, it was devastating for Bulls fans. So we can we can we can relate. We can relate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so now we have. Uh, if there's anything else you want to say about the Bulls at this point, or um, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I feel good. for them. I feel for the fans. I mean, I definitely know what it feels like seeing your uh, star player go down. Yeah, it it sucks. I mean, everything is just gone, just like that. It's just instantaneous. Like all your hopes and dreams for at least for one year are gone. Chicago back-to-back -back seasons, number one record in the regular season, no title, unfortunately. So now uh, Rajon Rondo, that's kind of a debated topic. How uh, he, you know, getting a little frustrated with a he wanted a jump ball called. They uh, awarded the Hawks with the ball. It was on a late play in a fairly close game that the Celtics were well getting crushed by early on, <laughs> letting the Hawks shoot right over them, and then all of a sudden. Rondo's frustration boils over. Look to appears to have tripped on I I forget if it was Pierce or whoever it was foot, and it, it it looked like Rondo wanted to keep his momentum towards the ref, but at the same time the debate is did he trip or did he intentionally bump him? It it looked like he tripped. If you look at it from the uh, top top view, mm hmm. If you see from above, yeah, you, can, you can clearly see that he tripped. His foot, you know, hit the refs. He, like, he tried to catch himself. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if you look at it at, from the side, it kind of looks like he stuck his chest out just a little bit. Yeah. But it's kind of like, well, I'm, leaning, I'm going forward into you anyway, so give me, let me give you a little extra, you know. A little extra oomph? Yeah. It's like it's almost like so in a way it's almost like both like it was not intentional and maybe a teeny tiny yeah. bit. He's like, well, I'm going to see anyway, so you know. The <laughs> <laughs> that was kind That's of funny. I think it, it was so I don't think it was. It, it'll be worse if it was. He had intentions to to chest bump him in the first place. <laughs> Just boom, yeah. like yeah, so it was kind of like you, you know? know, it was accident. And he was like, oh, well, might as well get a little, you know, mm -hmm. a little bit of a little bit of momentum into the rap. So it's like, yeah, in the end, they, they suspend him for a game. It's The funny part is, though, see, it's like, yeah, the Celtics lose the game with Rondo with his 11s assists like he always seems to get these days. He's Mr. Assist, man, when it comes to, yeah, he, he's the best passer. He, him, and, him, Nash, and Rubio are the top assist guys in basketball, probably, along with Chris Paul. Um, they lose that game, a very ugly, just crushing defeat at the hands of the Hawks. I mean, each team couldn't break to the 20-point mark in, like, every quarter except the first, where the Hawks got, like, 34 in the first quarter, and the rest of the game it was, like, 13, 16-ish for, like, everybody, both teams, Boston and Atlanta in that game. Um, but now here they come. It's <laughs> So then the, the Hawks, or Celtics lose that game, yet game two, the Hawks win, which was hilarious. No Rondo, and the Hawks win. No idea what to think of that quite classic oh, just so yeah the, <laughs> the Celtics won yep the Celtics able to win game 2 the Hawks win game 1 the Celtics win game 2 87 80 a very strong strong uh, solid game by Boston they didn't really kick butt but they got the job done that's pretty much where things stand there so uh, there's nothing else to talk about the Rondo bump uh, forecaster with some good comments there Good, strong comments. <laughs> Classic thoughts there. Uh, you got Dallas and Denver, two teams that just cannot seem to finish. Denver tonight against the Lakers. Frustrating. We'll get to that shortly. Dallas the other night, last night. Um, I have no idea what the heck Dallas's problem was. I mean, they could not finish. Dirk Nowitzki missing wide open the three. Uh, Jason Terry forcing up threes way too quickly in the shot clock. Of course, Russell Westbrook with his usual uh, ball-hogging style, keep, keeping Dallas in the game despite one miss after another. So Dallas was getting stops by default because <laughs> Westbrook was refusing to 
pass or even really take his time. He just wanted to keep shooting, shooting, shooting no matter what because that's the Westbrook way. And then you get <laughs> Dirk Nowitzki missing wide open threes. Um, he missed a very close teardrop type shot. I just, I, I couldn't believe it. I, I've never seen Dirk Nowitzki miss that many shots late in the game. I was a bit disappointed. Denver Nuggets kind of with a similar situation tonight against the Los Angeles Lakers. Not the most exciting game you've ever seen in term, if you're a Denver Nuggets fan yet. I mean, it was fun to watch, watching Denver come back, but it seemed like the whole game, you kind of knew who was going to win. It was going to be the gold, the purple and gold of L.A. It's just the same old crap over and over again every single year. That's just the way it goes. Yeah, I mean, Denver in general just um, not looking like a winning team the way they played tonight. Yeah, they look like the uh, like the Wolves. I I don't think they're gonna win this. They're not winning this. <laughs> no. The only thing you take from it is uh, experience with uh, uh, Javale and Fareed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a couple of rookies or second year guy. I think and ja- no, Javale's been around a little bit, but not very long. Yeah, they're, they're looking pretty good. I'm. I think Javale will uh, will uh, grow uh, with a better coach. Oh yeah. And, uh, well, under just Carl, that, yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, under Carl. And that last, that last play, I don't know what happened, but it really looked like there's no way too much, too much passing at the end there. Yeah, what were they doing? I mean, Denver had about 10 seconds left in the game. Uh, you're down by four. You're not yeah. down by, like, 10 here or down by one. You know, you're down by one maybe. You're trying to get the right shot off. Yeah. But they're taking forever. They're letting the Lakers clog the middle. They won't shoot wide, open three-point attempts. Yeah, or just shoot it. Or if not, if you're going <laughs> in, try to draw a foul. Because if, if you're passing the ball so much, you know, you're just going to run the clock out. It didn't make any, yeah, it didn't make any sense of what they were doing. I'm sure George Carl wasn't too happy. In fact, he really didn't look happy, did he? No, he didn't. And by the time, <laughs> you know, Free did, did get the tip in at the end, but you know, there was one second left. Yeah, it was way too little, too late, and... It's just one of those same old deals where you just kind of knew the whole game who was going to win, even though yeah. even though Denver probably deserved. Uh, it's just I think they could have won, but just yeah, with that, that uh, the the uh, the rebound that was lost. Ah, uh, there was a yeah. I mean, like uh, Kobe Bryant missing a a long two, and I don't know for yeah, it was, it was Fareed. Fareed. Yep. Yeah, Fareed. You got it. Yep. Yeah, Fareed was tipping it. He looked like he almost had it. Was going to have a breakaway, and then yeah. it just uh, was it. Sessions recovered the ball again, and that was that was, it. that was it. That was it. I mean, you could just tell that was it. That was opportunity of a lifetime for Denver, or not a lifetime, but for of a season yeah. for Denver, and that was about it. Um, yeah, I mean, the Denver is clearly a team on the rise. There's no doubt, but LA is just uh, they're still LA, and Bynum and Gasol are. Definitely been uh, have definitely helped rejuvenate uh, what looked like that might have been. Uh, I wouldn't call it a lost season, but a season to nowhere. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> basically is what it looked like earlier in the year. Bynum's having a just insane season. He had about thirty tonight. Just a crazy run for Bynum of late, and he didn't get hurt this year. Yeah, Andrew, first time. Andrew Bynum for the first time enters the playoffs without getting hurt. Isn't that nice? Well, no, I hate the Lakers. So, <laughs> Speaking of teams in Los Angeles, as we'll conclude the Denver-Dallas for the time being, yeah, the LA Clippers were getting manhandled, and I mean just destroyed by the Memphis Grizzlies, as I was predicting going into the series. From the get-go, Memphis pounding the heck out of the Clippers, Outscoring him was at 35 to like 13 in the first quarter, and they kind of flatlined the rest of the rest of the way, and then all of a sudden in the fourth quarter, I mean it was one of those games. Yeah, I turned it off for a little while because why watch something like that? It's pointless. And then all of a sudden, uh, Clippers are within 15. Clippers are within 10 or nine, I should say. And then Young hits a three-pointer. Uh, the Clippers are within six. What the hell's going on? Up oh, another miss by Memphis because they were all of a sudden not. They they just ran cold as ice, and the Clippers were just casually scoring. And then all of a sudden Young hits another three. It's a three-point game. 
Lionel Holland's calling for time, basically saying, like, um, what the hell is this? What, why are we all of a sudden within three here? <laughs> and Memphis basically after that, giving up bad, giving up points to the Reggie, likes of Reggie Evans and such. Crazy stuff. Next thing you know, you have, uh, Rudy Gay being guarded by Chris Paul because of some type of defensive mistake. That's the last point that Memphis would score in the game. And the Clippers finish a 27-point comeback, defeating the Memphis Grizzlies. I mean, that is a shocker. I think both of us easily, easily had Memphis crushing the Clippers in this series, right? Well, I think uh, Chris Paul's (laughs) flops has something to do with it. Yeah, Chris Paul's flops were all over the place, like Flop City, right? Yeah, that's what the that's what they are, Flop City. It's not Lob City. It's Flop it's City. Not, it's Flop City. It's Flop City. Don't you love Flop City? I'll tell you, the only thing that the Clippers need is for uh, Blake to master Chris Paul's tornado flop. If you <laughs> if you haven't seen it, just check it out on YouTube. Chris Paul's tornado flop. Mm-hmm. <laughs> brilliant. It's something you got to check out, guys. Go on YouTube, type in Tornado Flop, Chris Paul Flop. Check it out. There's some good stuff on YouTube. But there, are, there always is. I mean, every year. So that's our little funny playoff YouTube video for this year, at least thus far. It was it two years ago? It was Rondo uh, hitting, accidentally hitting, or maybe intentionally hitting uh, Ray Allen in the uh, well, low and inside. <laughs> when Vareo was going to flop, Rondo hit him low and inside with a, a fastball. Okay, sorry. Um, yeah. <laughs> that was back in our episode 58, uh, one of our you know Hall of Fame shows, you could call it. That was a fun one. Yep, yep, yep. And, uh, yep, I apologize if I'm talking, if it seems like I'm talking too much, uh, you know, the uh, forecaster a little bit under the weather right now, so... Bear, bear with us. We apologize. <laughs> it's just one of those times a year. It's been, <laughs> it's been, well, when you get weather like we have had here, where it's like 80 one day and, and 42 the next, and then 42 again, and then 80 again, stuff's going to kind of bounce around. I mean, people's health is going to bounce around just as much. So it, it's just been one of those deals. The Clippers in Memphis, that was a little bit roller coaster ish as well. I mean, it's, uh, I guess the Clippers are going to win that series now. I mean, a, a game like that, that's got to really change momentum. If Memphis comes back and, I mean, they have to win game two. There's there's no doubt about that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they have to win game two. Um, probably the boring series of the whole postseason. I mean, it's easily got to be Orlando and Indiana right now, I would yeah. think. I mean, yeah. it's like, so, you know? <laughs> Boston Atlanta's kind of fun. Well, actually, Chicago 76ers, that, that, that's a lame duck series. It's like two eighth seeds going at it right now. Yeah. But <laughs> Indiana, they're not looking like a number three seed right now. No. Oh, my God. No. <laughs> then Orlando's a lame duck team, as we know. The whole West, I mean, is amazing. Even, I mean, I even like the Utah Jazz. The whole West is awesome. Clippers, Memphis, that's going to be really cool. Unfortunately, Lakers, Denver, that's probably looking like L.A. is going to come out of that. Yeah. In like five, yeah. Thunder and Dallas, uh, probably the same thing. Stupid, because now the th- uh, Dallas are playing like the Thunder did last year in the West Finals, just not, not hitting the shots they need to hit. So there's two lame duck series in the East and in the West. It's uh, I guess the most lame duck series would be L.A. and Denver now. Unfortunately, just because L.A. is. Uh, well, they just might be back in the finals again. Who who knows? I mean, anybody could come out of the West practically, except uh, Utah or Denver at this point, I would think. It is going to be very, very interesting to see where things head. So, leading to that, I mean, <laughs> I guess we got to come up with a, a new champion this year, don't we? And even, we could even redo the conference finals again. That's been then lead up to the championship. So, would you like to go first or should I? Well, we'll start with the East. Hmm? Um, let's see for the East. See, it's like, oh, uh, uh, <laughs> jeez, it's, it, it's not as easy, yeah. No, uh, it's it's the heat. 
Heat. It's definitely the Heat. Yeah, it's the Heat. going to the finals. Yeah, yeah. I think the Heat will go to the finals as well. That's where I'm leaning. You have a conference championship opponent. That's going to be kind of tough to pick. Jeez, you got Indiana and Boston. <laughs> Chicago's going to go anyway. No, I, I'm guess. Hmm. Right now, I'm going to go with Boston. Boston. Yeah, it's probably really risky, but. I'd love to see Atlanta go all the way to the, the finals. They've never, never gotten past the second round in their history in Atlanta. In St. Louis, they've won it, but that was so long ago that no one knows who the St. Louis Hawks are. <laughs> I'll agree with you, Boston. You think Boston, too? Yeah, yeah I mean, it, it's mostly because of tonight's game. To, yeah, uh, Paul Pierce with 36 points tonight on the road. Yeah. That's big. Huge for the Celtics. Indiana, the, uh, Granger... And all them, like we were talking about the other night, do they look like they don't? They're not like a winning team right no, now. No, they they really don't. And you got Orlando and Chicago with, you know, it's, you know, if you it's debatable if you think Dwight Howard's a star or not. I think he's just a, ugh, I think he's a mental patient, frankly. Whereas Rose, obviously, unfortunately, is a medical patient right now. Uh, poor guy. Yeah, and the Sixers, they they collapsed. Big time. I mean, they were a number three seed at one point this year. Like, they should be, you know, in the three to six range with Orlando. But, no, <laughs> they died miserably. Yet, they kicked the Bulls' butt tonight for some reason. <laughs> nice performances by uh, Drew Holiday and such. It was a strong game by him. But, um, yeah, I guess Miami, Boston, we're, we're both kind of in the same thing there. We both have the heat going to the NBA Finals, representing the East for back-to-back seasons. Coach Eric Spolstra, <laughs> yeah, if he somehow does not win the Eastern Conference, guaranteed he will be fired. I mean, this is a yellow brick road for him right now. He, they had better go to the Finals, or he will certainly be fired. Western Conference, this one's going to be a little bit trickier, isn't it? I mean, it, the Thunder, I mean, I guess the Thunder are probably one of the easy picks. The Spurs could be champions this year, and they could lose in the second round to Memphis again or, or something. Yeah. It's going to be tough. But, I mean, right now, I guess, I mean, I have the Thunder in the conference finals. Right now, I'm going to say the Thunder and the Lakers in the West. Because I just don't trust the Spurs. I almost want to say Memphis, but uh, no. I'm going to go with the Lakers, unfortunately. It's, uh... Yeah, I, I would... Probably wants to choose the Spurs over the Lakers. Wouldn't that be great? They would but, hmm? but because of Bynum. Mm-hmm. That's, that's the key. Because, uh... Duncan's not going to stop him. No. He's just, he's kind of at that point, isn't he? Yeah, and Blair's not going to do it. You see, you see what tough uh, of a job uh, Fareed's having on uh, Bynum or Gasol. Mm-hmm. So I don't think Blair's going to do any better. Mm-hmm. So, um, uh, but, but Tony Parker over, over uh, Sessions. I just. That Sessions edition was a nice one. Yeah. It really yeah. was a big addition for the Lakers. Huge. I, I, I gotta say the Lakers front court is 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 better than Spurs. So it's an amazing front court, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, they yeah. they. Oh, go ahead. No, I'm just, I'm just trying to. Hmm. I like Ginobili. Yeah, and he's stayed healthy so far. Yeah. They've, and there there's a reason we. I mean, yeah, Greg Popovich. This has been a debated. Subject throughout the, uh, you know, throughout veteran NBA fans. Um, we like to consider ourselves that as well. We're like about 20 year vets. You got about 40 years of NBA watching experience here <laughs> uh, between uh, our combined, not not each, but excuse me, we're not that old, right? But um, yeah, the Spurs, Greg Popovich uh, rested his veterans on multiple occasions on the road during the season for that very purpose because the way they broke down last year. I mean, they had the number one seed ready to kick everybody's butt, and Memphis just went wham! I mean, they beat them over the head with a two-by-four in the first round, whereas this year, Popovich trying to take a more uh, approach of, let's rest some of the Ginobili, Parker, and Duncan deals here so they don't get uh, get killed in the first round again. Mm. And we'll see if it works this time. 
That that's why the West is so damn tricky because it's because of the Spurs. Otherwise, a lot of us, if if we thought the Spurs were going to bust, we'd be going L.A. I think I think both of us would be going L.A. and Oklahoma right now. Yeah. Because Memphis did not, yeah, that was not cool what they did with the Clippers there. Um, otherwise, if the Spurs really are a legit number one seed, they're an easy pick to go to the West Finals. Well, maybe not easy, but they're uh, legit. I won't say easy. <laughs> We're going to have a really, some really awesome second-round matchups coming up here with, uh, you know, the way the brackets are set up, it looks like actually L.A. and uh, Oklahoma would be in the facing each other in the second round. So I guess yeah. that's the thing. It's, yeah, I'm crazy. L.A. and Oklahoma will be facing each other in the second round, so I can't pick them. Mm-mm. It's not like regular season where you can just randomly pick people. <laughs> so... I guess we're gonna have to. I'm gonna go with Oklahoma and. Yeah, like you didn't realize that. Yeah, it's gonna be Oklahoma and San Antonio. I guess. I guess I am picking the Spurs in the West, just just out of faith, out of good faith. Yeah. Is that where you're going to? Yeah. Yeah, partially because of Popovich's arresting ability. So we have Miami in the East going to the finals. Who do you have in the West? You said Miami. Oh, uh, Oklahoma. Oklahoma, yeah. That's where I'm going, too. That's kind of the dream matchup that we've been waiting for the last two years. This, this Is, is it going to happen? <laughs> I don't think there's anyone... I mean, you have to stop uh, Durant. Yeah, it's, it's going to be not going to be easy. Yeah, you have to stop Durant. Uh, you, th- if I was the Lakers, this is what, you have to stop Durant. Mm-hmm. That's, that's a given. Mm-hmm. Second round matchup, yeah. Yeah, let... let uh, Westbrook do what he does and not pass and and and, and jack up shots. Mm-hmm. You know? um, do what you can to stop uh, Harden when he's on the floor. Mm-hmm. Um, and then get uh, Perkins in foul trouble. Ibaka, if, if possible. Get on the Perkins skin. Hope he gets a tick. Yeah, because he is definitely a temperamental individual. Holy cow! <laughs> Last game he uh, was it. Oh, what's the guy's name on... Uh, is it Spites? It is Spites on... Uh, yeah, the former Sixers, Spites of the Mavericks. Definitely got under Perkins' skin the last last game, uh, last night. They went crazy pretty much, almost went into fisticuffs before they got separated. That was fun to watch. Yeah, it sure was, huh? Spites. I am crazy. Yeah, yeah it's been... That's all, that's, that's all you really need to do. Actually, Spades is on Memphis. I'm really screwed up right now, and I apologize. Yeah, and the way Bynum's playing, <laughs> I'm getting all these guys mixed up. Yeah, I mean that. It's gonna be. That's the thing. There's gonna be a lot of matchups. So you get if you get Bynum and Perkins going at it. Well, you know, per, uh, that's gonna be a tough matchup. Well, Bynum's gonna hmm. win. Bynum should win that. Yeah, he should win that. So it's like you got a lot of going on. Uh, L.A. probably can't counter Durant. Yeah. And, of course, Oklahoma can't really counter Kobe. They really can't. I mean, nobody really can. But in the end, I do think Oklahoma would come out of a pretty crazy series there. Yeah. Barnes Damn, that's has big time. to slow down Durant. Mm-hmm. You have to be a guy like Barnes, pretty much. You don't have Odom anymore, and that's who you needed. And do not Boy. let Derek Fisher get a last-second shot. <laughs> yeah, well, last second, you know, like the stupid left-handed. Yeah, yeah like, no. kind, of, kind of like the shot that, uh, you know, like at, you know, ten seconds left, you know, Fisher will, will make a three like he usually does. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's the way he's always been. The only three. Yep, he'll make like one three in the whole game, and it'll be that one. Yeah, it'll be the one that like sets the nail, puts the nail in position to get hammered. Puts the oh, come closer. <laughs> To say it one more time. Just puts the nail in the p- in position to get hammered. Yes, yeah, that that's pretty much how he is. You know, he'll miss all night. He'll give up a lot of easy uh, layups and stuff, stuff like that. And the next thing you know, he'll uh, he'll hit a classic three pointer and bury somebody. You gotta like that, don't you? That's the way Derek Fisher's always been. He did it to us. we they were already up by eight, though. That jerk. <laughs> At least I said it. Uh, it was my Mahimni. That's who it was that uh, Derek, uh, excuse me, Perkins was going at it with. I'm just getting Spites mixed up because I remember, uh, yeah, Jordan Farmer and Spites were going at it. Spates, however you say his name, are going at it. So I got that confused. And 
I apologize to the listeners for that. It was Mahimi going at it with uh, Perk. Perk. Good old Perkins. Perkins is the angriest player in the league, pretty much. Him and Westbrook in his own way. Westbrook is his own way of being angry. He just plays crazy. Um, yeah, I think Den- yeah, Denver, or excuse me, L.A. and Oklahoma. I think the winner of that series is going to the championship uh, championship round. Oh, yeah. I think that's, in a lot of ways, you almost might want to say that's the NBA Finals. Yeah. Because I think L.A. and Oklahoma could beat Miami. I think they could. But is Miami on enough of a mission to win it? Maybe. I might. I just might be making that bold prediction. <laughs> so do you have Oklahoma and Miami in the finals then, ultimately? Yeah. yeah. Who do you have holding the ring? Uh, Oklahoma. The uh, Oklahoma with Kevin Durant and Westbrook holding an NBA championship, mm-hmm. the uh, Larry O'Brien Trophy. Ouch. And after Ouch. that, <laughs> we're going to hear rumors of a Wade trade. You think so? That's an interesting pred- uh, prediction. Where, where do you think you might be going? I mean, I, I'm just not out. sure. I'm just saying it, something will, will something will happen with that team if they can't if they can't get it done now. Mm-hmm. You know, something needs to be done. Or maybe Nash should go there next season. Nash and, and, <laughs> and Nash and Grant Hill will be on, will be on the Heat. You know, you never know. I mean, it's one of those things that could happen. Uh, Spolster would probably not will probably not be the coach. Also, I'm making that prediction that Eric Spolstra, Miami Heat do not win the title. Spolstra will not be the coach. So I'm ready to make a crazy prediction. And you're going to laugh at me, aren't you? You're going to laugh at me, aren't you? You can, you can tell what I'm going to say, can't you? <laughs> you're like, Joey, you, you're not going to do it, are you? I guess right now, I've got a sneaky feeling that somehow, some way, somehow, some way, they're going to pull it off. I think the Heat somehow, somewhere are going to pull it off. Hmm. You're like, Joey, you can't do this to me. <laughs> I think somehow they're going to pull it off. I, I, hmm. I It's hard to say. It's hard to say. But, I mean, I, I think somehow, way, the Miami Heat are going to figure it out. I mean, they had LeBron with a very strong start. I mean, the way they've dismantled the Knicks, I know that's not a, necessarily to gauge how they're going to play against Oklahoma, but... Hmm. They they did play Oklahoma fairly well earlier in the season. I think you, uh, I think just the Oklahoma's just too deep, and you have Durant who. I think I think the superstar calls will get neutralized. That's the one thing, yes. <laughs> Especially with for the, the most on, part on uh, LeBron's side with his flopping. Mm-hmm. I think they'll get neutralized with uh, Durant and his. I, I'll say I think Durant flops, but he just. If you bump into him, just like Wade. Wade doesn't exactly flop around. Mm-hmm. But if you, you know, just graze him, graze yeah. his shoulder, you know, it's, it's going to be a foul call. That's the thing. It probably is going to be, it's going to be, uh, it, it, it'll be an awesome series. I, it's, I kind of, I kind of hope that's the matchup just, just because it'll, it'll be really cool to see those two going at it once and for all. Yeah. The thing with Oklahoma is, uh, the, these two key players I like a lot. They don't score a lot, but Ibaka and Cephalosha. That could be key for stopping Miami. And it could the be. the Lakers. I mean, Cephalosha, the, the mm-hmm. last game and the Lakers against the Lakers, mm-hmm. there was pretty much nothing Cephalosha could do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, he he, has, he played some serious defense on Kobe, but he just couldn't couldn't stop him. That was a, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just one of those things. Yeah, I mean, cause, because Kobe's just that superhuman thing. I mean, it's yeah. But, you could have be late. Oh, oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. Double team them. But yep. once Kobe flips that switch, yeah, you know, <laughs> you could literally put a billboard in his face and he'll still make the shot. Yeah. It's just, it's just the way it is. It's, it's, it's magic with with a guy like that. You know, yeah, that's where Michael is so good too. Yeah, I don't think you can you know, give uh, Savalos respect. That's like uh, mm-hmm. getting dunked on, but you're going for the block. I mean, hey, at least you're trying to block the shot. You know, you're not cowering away. Mm-hmm. Like, and. Uh, like a uh, candy man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, like a little candy. Oh, classic. <laughs> That's all that guy did. Yeah. I mean, people would be dunking and he'd be kind of covering his face. Like, oh, I don't want any part of this. Yeah. That was a little candy. Yeah. And that's the thing that, that, uh, mm-hmm. that the Thunder have. They have Cephalosha. Ibaka. Yeah. Ibaka, mm-hmm. Ibaka's going to make, uh, he's probably going to uh, neutralize, uh, uh, I forgot his name. Wow. 
Look at you. Ibaka's going to neutralize Andrew Bynum, right? No, Andrew. not Bynum. Pow, pow, pow. Oh, you're thinking of Miami, Chris He's, Bosch. I'm yes. like, I think both of us are blanking here. Sorry, Chris yeah, Bosch. I'm yeah. think of the big two. <laughs> I know why you forgot his name, because there is no big three in Miami. It's a big two, yeah. and there's this one guy who's, he wears number one on his jersey. That's about how many rebounds he gets. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, Outside of uh, Wade and, and uh, LeBron, it's kind of like that that guy that uh, no that one tall guy they signed who's just <laughs> he's he's you know he's good sometimes and he feels like but uh, a lot of times yeah, he'll just yeah. the RuPaul of basketball uh, 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 Chris Chris Johnson no no that's the NFL excuse me um, uh, it looks like ostrich. Chris Bosh oh yeah, yeah he looks yeah. like a, yeah he does look like an ostrich he does <laughs> yeah Ibaka's gonna gonna slow him down. So yeah, that's pretty much where he's he is. like pretty much ineffective. Mm-hmm. I mean, he might get his points in here and there, but he won't because uh, the Thunder can can afford to not get any points coming from Ibaka, mm-hmm. and Miami can't really have that. Not you know uh, having Bosch not contribute. The same thing with uh, Haslam. I, I'm not sure of what type of job uh, Perkins go do on him. I'm mm-hmm. sure he'd get under his skin. Yeah, he would. And even then, you got Ibaka there with his help defense. Mm-hmm. Then you have uh, Cephalosha uh, either on uh, Wade or LeBron, slowing them down. Mm. It's <laughs> and but and on the Heat, you have uh, Chalmers, who's a pretty good defender, but it's Westbrook. Yeah, you that's know, a problem. What are you gonna do? <laughs> and then you He's have a lot, uh, Westbrook's a lot bigger than him too. Yeah, Chalmers, yep, taller. You know, oh, go ahead. And then on the heat, you have uh, that his name again. He was on the Grizzlies. Yes, he was. He was on the Grizzlies. I'm kidding. <laughs> this guy, Shane Battier. Look at Battier. this. This guy is yes. Shane Battier's. With his patented uh, forehead tap defense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> he does that, doesn't he? It's, it's, uh, it's funny, too. It's like, yeah, you forget. Yeah, it's like. We like we like to do these little bits, don't we? But no, it's uh, the whole Shane Battier deal. I mean, he he's been pretty invisible, really, for the the Heat this year. I think. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. He's been kind of he's been kind of out of the picture of late. It's um, but you got Norris Cole. You know, Norris Cole should have been a Timberwolf, right? Yeah. Or at least his pick could have been a Timberwolf because we kept trading down and trading down because we just had to fire this one guy. In yeah, the end, those I don't know what that was about. Yeah, in the end, those may have been the best trades in history, just just for the fact we got rid of Kurt Rambis. It just sucks that we wound up missing out on a nice shooting guard, or yes. a good or a good backup point guard in Norris Cole, Marshawn Brooks losing out on him. Oh. Uh, that was uh, a load of crap. I not I was I'm still I'm still seething about that. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's like one of those things where we watch uh, Ty Lawson. Yeah. Like you could have had him. Could have had Curry. Could have had Ty Lawson. That would have been the bomb. You know, that's the guy you needed to get. That's the guy we... <laughs> I mean, it's just... I mean, we had him in our grip. But, unfortunately, we had him already traded before. We were... We only drafted him only to trade. Yeah, and that's one of those uh, 2020 things. Because if we had Ty, if we would have kept Ty, we would have had a... Uh, uh, a higher pick, mm-hmm. but the picks that we got didn't pan out anyway. So, <laughs> classic Wolves luck, isn't it? Yeah. If anything, yep. we could have gotten, uh, you know, free this season if we would have, you know, had a had a higher pick. That would have been nice, wouldn't it? That would have been. That would have, you know, Fareed, It's like Paul. we need somebody with some energy to come come off the bench, give us some energy. Derek Williams didn't do that, did he? At least not for the most part. A little bit here and there in spurts, but not enough. Yeah, the guy like Paul George from the force to get him. Mm-hmm. It would have, you know, came out good. Oh, man, that would have been a perfect pick for us. It's just, we got to get a shooter in this draft. Yep, that'll be a topic we're going to get to very shortly here. Yeah. Um, so I guess I'm going, I'm, um, I'm on the heat, you're on the thunder. It's like it's like just to play devil's advocate. I'm picking the Heat. Yeah, just I, I just had to get you going. I'm going for, I'm going for Westbrook. I Westbrook just Westbrook here, Durant, KD. 
I just I just had to get you going. I just had to get you going. The big three. And plus, I think we both do don't like the Thunder very much. But you like you don't like either team, though, do you? No, Thunder or the Heat? No, I don't. Well, I like Durant, but just not Westbrook. I don't like his attitude. Just like uh, that's how I feel. Just like Kobe. I don't, I don't like Westbrook. I can't say as a person. Mm-hmm. This is showboating. Yeah, I don't like Westbrook's showboating. He's uh, his, his antics are. Yeah, he's complaining his expressions. Yeah, he'll he'll hit some three pointer. And he's got to show the whole world that, oh, he's got to put out the smoke and it's done, you know. It's like, come on, man. I know, I mean, it, I know partially he's just, he's just playing with passion and all that good stuff, but it seems like he's more about playing with, he just wants a grandstand. That's that's the way I see it. I think other people do, too. Yeah, Durant's a whole yeah. lot more low-key with it. I love that about Durant. He'll hit a shot and just kind of move on with his day. Yeah. You know, if it's a championship-winning shot, he'll celebrate, but... He's not out there to try to show up his opponent, where I think Westbrook is. I think Westbrook is out there to show up his and, opponent. And he, he's another candidate for if they don't win this season, you know, we're going to hear rumors of trades. That's very, very, very possible. I can't disagree with that. I There's no way. I mean, Bosch and Westbrook, yeah. Or, excuse me, Wade and Westbrook, yeah, that's very possible. Or, yeah, I don't think they'd trade LeBron. I, I think they'd keep LeBron before yeah. they'd keep Wade, which is yeah. kind of strange saying that. But it's kind of strange saying that, isn't it? Well, I mean, LeBron's not. I mean, he's not. Uh, he hasn't had as many injuries. Mm-hmm. That's the th- yep, yep. I mean, it, it's just the only reason why I think it's strange is how Wade is like. Wade's the reason they have that ring. They actually did win a championship once, Miami. <laughs> right now, back in '06, I mean, you won't you won't be able to get much for Bosch. Yeah. Yeah. Get, yeah, he probably couldn't get much for Bosch, huh? Yeah, Bosch's value was uh, it's not, it's not as high as when he was on the Raptors. Mm-mm. So, oh, at the time, yeah, he was looked on as a franchise player at the time, and yeah. that got exposed pretty quickly, <laughs> very quickly. I mean, I, I when I would watch him play, you know, at first it's like it was like, wow, you know, you're playing fantasy basketball, like, dang, this guy's awesome. He's like a Garnett, and then you watch him play, and it's like, oh, he's not even close. <laughs> you know, like all of his great plays with with two quotation marks on each side there when I said that word, uh, we're lucky. <laughs> all of his great plays were like he's getting fouled and he just flings the ball up in the air over his head without even looking and it goes in. It's like, oh, baby, what a play. You know, it's like, no, oh, baby, what a lucky play. <laughs> that drove me nuts. So I guess uh, if you have any, uh, anything else you want to add on Miami-Oklahoma matchup, the, the dream bout, and the forecaster is shaking his head, so we are going to move on to Wolves basketball right after this. And we are back here on Timberwolves Explosion, episode number 76, which is a reminder for all of you with uh, iPods and Microsoft Zunes and other MB3 players. So, yeah, here we go, back with the Wolves conversation. Well, Rick Edelman and David Kahn had a press conference at the end of the season, and it was uh, pretty intense, actually. Like, yeah. uh, <laughs> Rick Edelman is not happy. And he made absolutely sure he was that that we that we found that out. Like I am, basically, he's like there are players on this team that don't care. And Khan, for the most part, over the years, has said, "Oh, we're just going to make little tweaks, little tweaks. Just kind of, we don't need to make wholesale changes." Or they'll say they're going to earlier, and then they change yeah. it to tweaks. This time, they sound a lot more serious. Yeah, well, I think you finally have a legit coach that knows what he's doing well a coach mm-hmm. that knows what he's doing mm-hmm. so and I'm glad that uh Khan's more in the back seat now I think uh, Adelman had, has you know some say in that before, mm-hmm. he, before he even uh, came here but yeah I'm glad what uh Adam, I'm glad that Edelman uh speaks his mind and that's the big part you know he actually does speak his mind and the good part is it does warrant something this time around it's it's not uh Excuse me if there was any choppiness there with the audio, I apologize. But uh, there was not any uh, 
in the in the in the Kurt Rambis era, if he were to speak out, people would just kind of be like, yeah, you know. But when yeah. <laughs> when Adelman speaks out, you know something's going to happen here because in a lot of ways, as we kind of knew coming in, he's the real boss of the Timberwolves right yeah. now. Yeah. And another thing I like is uh, with Adelman, it's he has like no. We're coming here with uh, uh, a sense of like no one's. No one's untradeable. Mm-hmm. This whole season for Adam, man, I think it's been just an evaluation. Kind of like, you know, how, you know, when we watch the game, we see how, you know, who should be here the last, well, last couple games. Mm-hmm. Who should be here next season with Adam, man, that's what this whole season was about, pretty much. In a lot of ways, yes. And they did go as far as to say Rubio and Love are the ones that they're that are safe. But basically, everybody else is as good as, you know, gone or maybe maybe not. Type yeah. of deal, like maybe not, but if they leave, they leave. You know, type of thing. Like, oh, like they won't be defensive about them leaving at all. Yeah, it's going to be a, a very interesting off season, and I'm looking forward to it. Frankly, yeah, it, I think if Kurt was still here, it'll be more of like you know, well, we, let's keep the same faces around. You uh-huh. know, it's like like kind of says, do little tweaks here and there, mm-hmm. just because you know we like uh, Wesley's smile. <laughs> Wesley smile, Johnny yeah. Flynn smile. You know, I, uh, yeah. yeah, and I, I mean, I, I like Wes, and uh, but the season just was just completely disappointing. It was an absolute. It was, it was a crushing. It, it was crushing for for us. You know, I mean, our confidence basically in Wesley Johnson was shattered yeah. this year. I mean, it's about the best way to put it, isn't it? Yeah, and I don't think. I mean, hopefully he he does better. I hope. I, I hope so. I mean, he's probably the other one that's, well, he's not that safe to return. It's just contractually he's more safe, we'll say. Yeah. <laughs> he's in a contract, yeah. or not contract year. He's in the rookie scale deal. Uh, it's not expensive and probably tough to trade at the same time. Or, you know, to, you're probably not going to get much in return anyway if you trade him at this point. Unless, for whatever reason, somebody he's, out there is in love with him. Yeah, yeah, or he's in a little, like, he's in a package deal. Yeah. For an expiring or it, something. It'd be a package or it's expiring or something big, maybe, if there is something big to, to be had. Yeah, speaking of that, this is the first time, like you said, with with, uh, with, with what Khan said, um, you know, finally we're going to make some moves. Yep. Finally we're going to make some serious moves, yeah, too. It's yeah. just not, you know, lip service like all the other seasons where, you know, everybody's like, wow, let's see what we're going to do. No trades or something very small, you know, or we pick up mm-hmm. a, a a Darko type player mm-hmm. who's you know uh, Darko or Randolph, huh? yeah, low low risk high reward type guys. But now I think with Adam and he's saying no, we need some established players. Mm-hmm. We need to do right something now. serious, and we need <laughs> it now. Yep, and he's absolutely been saying that we need it now. It, it's no joke. This is D Day for the franchise in a lot of ways. It's gonna be it's gonna be fun to keep up with though, isn't it? Yeah. And we don't have to worry about the lockout. We don't have to worry about a lockout this year. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Isn't that great? No more lockout. Oh. Hockey, hockey. They're gonna have to kind of go through maybe the same thing we did this past year. Unfortunately, that was yeah. I think they're going to. So the Wild with their exciting little off season, which is similar to this one with the Wolves, they're gonna yeah. Unfortunately. <laughs> yep. So it's basically Adelman and Berea of like mind. Because J.J. Berea, of course, uh, a few weeks ago came out after one of another one of the Wolves' you know lopsided losses and said that his teammates quit. He he wouldn't name names, but he said there are players here that just quit. They don't t- they're not really trying. They're not playing seriously. They don't care. Yeah, so you can see it, and you can see it. And it's funny, he didn't name names, but I mean, I think there's a good idea. One is almost a guarantee. Yeah. <laughs> he was the number two pick in the 2008 draft, and he's always, I mean, is there a single day that Michael Beasley does not look high? No. The, <laughs> no. I mean, the whole press conference when he first got here, I kept imagining him just going, hey, man, look at my eyes, man. Can you tell, can you tell him hi? <laughs> he just kind of had that look to him, and he, that's always, always looked, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. He he's incapable of. It, it, it looks it looks like he you know he just gets high for every game at this point. It's kind of like mm-hmm. yeah, I don't want to go out there, so I'm just gonna mentally not be there. Mm-hmm. But I can still function. Yeah, that's what it's like. It's like <laughs> oh, I can still function, you know. And 
that's definitely a guy who uh, the only only way to describe him is bust. You know, bust. That's and it's sad because in his interviews, he seems like he wants to be here. Yep, that's the. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it's just it's just sad to see it, all that talent go to waste. It really is because clearly he has enough talent to be a twenty to twenty five points a game player, yeah. like twenty very low end, I think, but. Um, yeah, and as you were saying in his interviews and such, and the quotes in the newspapers and all that, he sounds like he really likes it here. He really loves it here. He's always basically like, I really want to stay and all that type of stuff. But, Michael, <laughs> if you really want to stay, I don't see any evidence of it. I, I don't see it. If When somebody really is passionate about something, you see it. And I don't see any passion in this guy at all. Like, it's Bobby Knight did this long ago. I, I don't agree with what he did one time, but he walked up to the chalkboard and drew a heart, and he said, none of you have this. Or, I mean, none of you know what this is because none of you have it. Hmm. And I would do that to for Michael Beasley. Yeah, and <laughs> I, I think, I think I, I like the fact that Boreas said that. Mm-hmm, yeah. But I wish that came from someone who had more production on the court. <laughs> yeah. You know, because it's, it's like, yeah, I get what you're saying, man, but... You know, you 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 barely pass me the ball. Mm-hmm. Is he? Yes. And I, just like with uh, Gerald Wallace, Gerald Wallace said uh, kind of the same thing with uh, you know, on the Blazers mm-hmm. that they gave up when we know we crushed them. Yeah, the you know, we had to give up. And if you know Wallace says someone like Wallace says it, and Kobe, especially Kobe, mm-hmm. the team will listen. Yeah. Oh But yeah. if you have you know, Javale McGee saying it, or you know, <laughs> yeah, just some bench player, then. You know, it's not going to have that much of an impact. So that's why I'm glad uh, that Adelman at least, you know, agreed with it. Yeah, he worked with them on it, and that's a good thing. I mean, the one thing Berea has is a ring. That's the one good part. I mean, he's no Sam Cassell, you know, coming in off the bench for Kenny Smith for the world champion Rockets or anything. So we know what Sam Cassell grew up to be something pretty special, even though he's a knucklehead in his own way. But, uh, yeah, that, that's the truth. I mean, Berea... Chuck's his stats were <laughs> his stats were phenomenal the last month or so, but it's just it's the old like he's the best player on a horrendous team type of thing, and yeah. that that happens so much. Where a guy like Antoine Walker, we saw that years ago with Atlanta, he got traded there, and he had numbers like he was like he had Kevin like what Kevin Love is doing almost type numbers there, and then he gets traded to decent teams and he gets exposed as a Michael Beasley. Yeah. <laughs> That's basically what he really is. Antoine Walker, and yeah, Barea was getting like triple doubles and like 14 assists, but yeah. it certainly didn't look like he, uh, he didn't look like a guy getting 14 assists, though. He looked like somebody that, uh, he looked like a Rashad McCants half the time out there, like, um, I'm going to keep shooting it regardless if it goes in, regardless if it's good for the yeah. team or not. He seems like the type <laughs> who, I'm just, well, f- from what I've seen and how he got into uh, arguments with Love on the uh, on the bench, mm-hmm. Sacramento game, yep. yeah, and the way he plays, seems like if he did believe that believe that the teammates quit, he probably he probably figure, well, hey, if they quit, I'm just gonna jack up the shots. Mm-hmm. You know, that could be. Why pass to someone who you know I think quit? Mm-hmm. And that doesn't that doesn't help the team at all. No, you know? and if they did feel that way and you're jacking up shots, it's, like, it's not gonna make them wanna. <laughs> want to, uh, you know, compete in the game. They figure, hey, you're jacking up shots, I'm not getting the ball, so why rebound, why play defense? Mm-hmm. It's a, it's, a, it's a really painful domino effect that I think is, yeah, yeah. that you're describing. Yeah, and that's, yeah. yeah, that absolutely happens out there. It happens a lot in basketball, and I think Berea, yeah, I, I think you're right. Not to be too overly agreeable, as you guys are probably like, this is bad, why is he agreeing with everything? <laughs> no, but I mean, no, I mean, it's good stuff, it's true, I mean... I could definitely see that with Berea. It's uh, I, he seems like the type that would respond that way. Yeah, he, he really does because yeah. he's he's got a chip on his shoulder. If 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 people out there haven't noticed, Berea has a chip on his shoulder. Like him or hate him, he does. But um, yeah, the fighting with Love thing that seemed kind of yeah. I mean, Love basically made a comment earlier or during that game of hey, you're not Carmelo Anthony here. Stop stop uh, shooting so much basically, and Berea got pissed off. That's, yeah, that's, and if Ray, if Ray was a true leader, mm-hmm. you know, and with those views, he would have mm-hmm. he would have uh, said something off court, mm-hmm. or sat next to Love, said something, or you know, you don't, you know, you don't lunge at your teammate, mm-hmm. especially you know during a game. Yeah, 
Yeah, and especially if he's like the the real leader of the team. Yeah. yeah. It kind of reeked of something. I mean, fights happen in sports and basketball on teams. They, they happen. You know, the Bulls, Michael Jordan was often punching teammates in the stomach or face or something during practice. <laughs> he was well known for that, but still, I mean, who's, who's Berea to be like that? Yeah. yeah. Honestly. Seems like a little punk to me. <laughs> to be frank, he kind of does. Yeah. He reeks of it. But, um... And yeah, we're not trying to be overly negative. We're just, you know, we're giving our analysis of the, especially the last month and a half of the season, which, uh, by all accounts, was not good. Yeah, and it shows mm. that how much we actually need uh, veteran leadership on the team. Mm-hmm. We desperately need it. Yep. Which is why I, I want, to, I actually wanted Fish to be on the team. And it's funny when we think about that. Yeah, I mean, because we both can't stand him, but yeah. on the Wolves, we'd probably like him. I think. Yeah, I don't want to give many, many minutes. Yeah. I'd rather yeah. give him minutes than Brea. At this point, yeah, sure. I mean, there's a guy with, uh, you know, the whole ring cred type of thing and back a point guard type of deal. And all that experience. You know, the, the experience that Jarek Fisher has is like off the charts. Yeah. Like we're talking Robert Ori, you know, uh, Steve Kerr type experience. You know, those guys aren't exactly like legends, but they were there hitting big shots when they needed to for championship teams. Yeah. And we're talking lots and lots of championship teams. He's he's one of those guys. Man, oh man. No. Yeah, and I really think, I know a lot of fans, uh, you know, if, when people talk about, oh, let's get Gerald Wallace, uh, Crawford. Mm-hmm. It's, and they say, they're too old. Mm-hmm. I mean, to me, they're not, they're not too old. You no. need some veterans here to bring up guys like Love, Rubio. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we win a couple championships. By the time, you know, they, you know, they are too old, mm-hmm. you know, Love and, and Rubio and, you know, any young guys we get would be in the prime. Yeah, and the, yeah, they'll be 28, 7, 27, all that. Yeah, because if you do a half and half, that's a whole lot better than, say, like, you know, the Spurs and... In the Mavs, where they got to inject a couple of young guys in, mm-hmm. so one of the the uh, you know the older guys leave. That's basically the team. Yeah, you know, it's the top. It. Play- yeah, it's mm-hmm. the top players. Yeah, it's like you know when Dirk's gone, it's it's over. Yeah, basically. I mean, and Dallas appears more and more like a one year wonder. Yeah, unfortunately, the way that Thunder kind of have handled them, but yeah. So if <laughs> uh, you know if, if Crawford's done and uh, Gerald Wallace is done by mm-hmm. that time, hopefully uh, Johnson's way better. Yep. And, and, you know, Lee's way better. Yeah, that's another possibility. Lee, you never know. So we at least get uh, guys who, you know, have at least uh, three years left in them. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, and those guys absolutely have three years left. Yeah. I would definitely agree with that thought. I mean, Gerald Wallace would be a wonderful, I mean, absolutely incredible addition to this team, if humanly possible. And Paul Allen of the KF, uh, Paul Allen of KFAN even brought that up, and I was just smiling. You know, just hearing that, just hearing, you know, that's the, about pretty much a perfect addition to this team. Should the Wolves get so be so fortunate to add the the, the talents of Gerald Wallace, we need the decision, the decision part three. Gerald Wallace taking his services to the land of lakes. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? Oh yeah, that would be I so awesome. Wallace here for a while. Oh yeah, I mean, yep, we've been in love with Wallace for years. Ah, there we go. He's, he is a he has a player option with the New Jersey Nets at nine point five million, so he is at that point in his uh, contract right now with the Brooklyn Nets. By the way, with their black and white logo, that's about as boring as the previous logo. Yeah, I was going. I was <laughs> one, I, I liked it at first, and I thought, you know, uh, of the Spurs. Yeah, the black and white, and then, uh, <clears throat> Miami's new alternate mm-hmm. black and white jersey. The L Heat, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know about it. Yeah, it's it's like that's part of it too. When you think about it, the whole I'm talking kind of weird there, but the whole deal of it's been done and it's been done and it's been done. Yeah. I mean, that's what I didn't like about the Wolves uh, black jerseys, the, the the old ones from back when the Wolves still had the trees on the logo, <laughs> you know, or on the jerseys. Excuse me, is they looked like the Spurs, and I just I hate the Spurs so much. I mean, I can't stand them. And it's like, why do I want to look like a team I hate? So it's like, 
<laughs> there's just too much pinned up hatred for that franchise for over the years, you know, with the Garnett Duncan rivalry and all that. And I, I don't know. And them always, the Wolves always having a big lead and they get clutch threes and kill us. But stuff like that. As a team, I don't want to look like. <laughs> but yeah, so we were able to throw in the Nets logo there. <laughs> the Brooklyn, the Brooklyn Nets. Yes. With Mario. Mario. Okay, sorry. But it's uh, it, it's going to be intriguing to see how things go. I mean, there's the free agent list is uh, pretty big. It's not LeBron, Bosch, and well, Bosch, screw Bosch, but LeBron and Wade type big. But it's there's still a lot of a lot of guys floating out there. We got Steve Nash. Big ticket. <laughs> the big ticket is a free agent, which is hilarious. Tim Duncan is a free agent. They both made twenty one point two million last year. One guy that, thank God in heaven, yeah, he's a, he has a, his contract goes into next year, but it is a team option for, was it $5 million? Marto Webster, a team option for about $6 million, almost 6 Gee, do you think the Wolves are going to accept that? Oh, no. Oh, no. no. <laughs> thank God Marto Webster is not guaranteed next year. Oh, my. So that's a, that's a deal. Uh, Beasley obviously qualifying offer eight point two million. Uh, insert the song of Happy Trails to you. <laughs> so th- those two guys, I think, are the absolute biggest uh, addition by subtraction. You know, I mean, isn't that about right? Yeah. Addition by subtraction. I actually think I think Beasley will Beasley will stay if for one million. No, yeah, I'm we, kidding. We're not going to give kidding. him much if he stays. Yeah. We're just not going to give him much. You can't. It's kind of good. I actually think it'll be another, like, a, a one-year deal. Mm-hmm. That's just what I do. Just to kind of see, you know, if you really like it here, you know, we're trying to get cap space. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. you know, if you want to stay, this is what you're getting. So take it or leave it. You know, if you want to stay here, then maybe we can see if you actually uh, get better. Yeah, build a reputation. You know, right? Yeah. That's about it. Try to build your reputation. I mean, because your reputation stinks right now. You know, Beasley. His reputation really stinks right now. And if he wants to have a shot of sticking around, I mean, yeah, maybe 1.5 to 2 million, yeah. maybe for a year. Like a mm, eh, Tolliver contract, 2.1 million unrestricted. That's a guy I would bring back, honestly. Yeah, Tolliver, yeah I was about to say, yeah, Tolliver, I actually like. Yeah, I, I like him too. I mean, he, when he. See that's the difference between see because we're kind of you know free agency we're all over the place and I think we can we can be with free agency Beasley, Tolliver and Darko Milicic the, <laughs> the uh, why am I why am I losing the word now but the um, well I'll simplify the word instead of the better word but uh, the different the differential in these guys in the situations when they when they have limited playing time, you have a guy like Contrast. There we go. There's Contrast. Thank you. Uh, is um, you had Darko Milicic not playing for an extended period of time, Tolliver and Beasley. What did Tolliver do when he all of a sudden got inserted in the game again? Yeah, he was ready. He was ready, and he kicked some butt. And I, I forget who it was against. It. It was against one of the better teams in the league, like. I don't think it was San Antonio. Maybe it was Dallas on the road. I think that's what it was. I think it was Dallas. I can't remember because it was a while ago. But he was awesome in that game. He got like 15 points off the bench. Darko Milicic, they can't play him because he's so out of shape. He doesn't even stay in shape. <laughs> yeah, he, he he's gone. He is absolutely gone. and. I used to think, why would you use the amnesty clause on Darko Milicic because his contract isn't that big? But here's the thing. He's the only Timberwolf that we can really truly use it on because the contracts that are eligible for amnesty are only contracts that were signed before the uh, collective bargaining agreement. So he's the only guy on the roster, really, that's eligible for it. I was that of like, well, see, Kevin loves new contract, obviously, and why would you amnesty him? Yeah. That would be like, <laughs> whoops. Yeah, I mean, he's the only true candidate for amnesty, so that's probably going to happen because he's due for two more years, and there, there's no chance, you know. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I think right now, team, there's no way we're going to give any uh, 
any uh, player who's not, you know, certified a big contract again. I mean, we've mm-hmm. done it with uh, with a bunch of players uh, in the past. Mm-hmm. I mean, for uh, years, T yep. Thud. T Thud. Yep, that's basically Thud because he just, you know, he just Thud. He hit the floor. Yeah, I mean, after Mad Dog's contract, after finally <laughs> getting rid of him, I thought, I, well, that's yeah. it. Well, mm-hmm. There's no way we're gonna give anyone, you know. Big, long, huge contracts anymore. We're kind of doing it right now, so I think I don't think Adelman is going to allow any of that. You know, mm-hmm. foolishness. Yeah, with like role players getting five million a year for five years or something. Yeah, Dar- the the worst of all time I think is Yarich. That was like six oh, yeah. six years. I mean, I actually oh. liked Yarich when he was first started mm-hmm. with the Clippers, especially yeah, the Clippers. But- yeah, but he got injured. Yeah, and that was it. And that was yeah. He was just he was a horrible player after that. Never never recovered uh, whatsoever. Um, yep, Cassell, and we're finally finally gonna have that that stupid trade is finally not gonna hang over our heads anymore after after the oh, draft yeah. after the draft it's finally over. Um, thank God for that. It took about seven years, but it's finally over. Yes, yes. We're, yeah. Thank God. <laughs> and we're getting Utah's lottery protected yes. pick because they made you, the playoffs. Utah. Made a whole lot better. Thank God. So we're at least getting something. Mm-hmm. The 18th pick will go to the Wolves in the 2012 NBA draft. That is a very exciting. Um, we have that to look forward to. Possibly a shooting guard. Possibly an asset to trade for a real player, not for cash this time. Well, uh, let me <laughs> say something. Uh, yes, I, yeah, I spoke yeah. with you about this before uh, yeah. with our pick. Mm-hmm. When we're in the playoff running. I didn't really care about the pick at all. Mm-hmm. You know, I, Ooh, you know that, yeah. yeah, we're giving it to the Clippers, so what? I mean, yep. well, actually, uh, the Hornets. Hornets now because of Chris Paul, yep. Yeah, figured, yeah, so what? Then it's not going to be that great of a pick anyway. You know, we're going to be in the playoffs, finally. Mm-hmm. And then Rubio got injured. Mm. And then we started losing. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm thinking, wow, we're going to really use that pick. And we're like uh, legitimately... I like the Spurs. You know, our, our, our one of our best players get injured, we start losing. Mm-hmm. You know, we get a high pick. The next season, we're even better. Mm-hmm. You know, we're already in the playoff running with oh, the guys man. we have. Yep. You know, they get injured. You know, like Tim Duncan. That's what happened. Deal. That's what happened. Yep, David Robinson broke his foot. They were a really legit 50-plus win team. Robinson breaks his foot. They have a horrible record, and they get Duncan. It's like, geez, I was like, they're going to be a dynasty. <laughs> and then they were, unfortunately. <laughs> good coaching, good draft, phenomenal drafting, by the way. Incredible culture of, of winning, even though I just hate that team. But they, and I probably shouldn't, but I do, you know. Partially because it's like, why are they this good? They don't even look like good players, and they're like making everything, you know. <laughs> like, Ginobili doesn't even look like a good player, but he's extremely good. Uh, that might sound kind of mean to say, but he just doesn't look like he's that good to me. I don't know. He's not bulky or anything, you know. Yeah, Jinobi's really not to me. Uh, I think he's uh, underrated. He's, he's tricky. He's very he's yeah. Tricky. He's tricky good. Yeah, he's tricky good. I mean, he hits every shot in the, yeah. the world. You know, seventy percent three point shooter like a year, like a couple of years ago against the Wolves in the in the first Carabas year. Oh, seventy percent from three. I like mono. Yeah, mono y mono. <gasps> Shinobi! <laughs> there we go, right? Can you dig it? No. <laughs> it's a Shaq and Barkley, right? No, no I'm sorry. Uh, bouncing around a little bit, but that's what are you going to do, right? Yeah, but the 18th pick, at least we're getting something out of, you know, out of this. Yeah, because that's the funny part. The As of right now, now we know, we finally know what we're getting for Al Jefferson. And it's really funny. Malcolm Lee, because of all that trade down from last year's Utah pick. Yeah. Malcolm Lee, cash, firing Kurt Rambis, which actually may have been the best part of the trade. It's me as sick as that sounds. The yeah. best that may be the best trade in Wolves history because we were able to fire Kurt Rambis. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, but I wish we would have gotten Brooks. At some point. Oh Brooks. man, I wish we got Mal or Marshawn. I almost called him Malcolm because of Malcolm Lee on the mind here. Marshawn Brooks, that would have, that would have made it a phenomenal trade. Oh yeah, because we get whoever's going to be the 18th pick, be it a real pick or a warm body from another team, Malcolm Lee and Marshawn Brooks. That would have been kind of cool. But I actually don't think we'll even use that pick. I, I actually think we'll package it to try to pick up a, a shooting guard. If, that's if possible. We can't get Crawford. Yep. 
Yeah. Or Gordon or Mayo mm-hmm. or uh, Terry. That's a legit possibility. Yeah, because, yeah, there's a lot of free agencies. And, yeah, that was something we were talking about before or off, off mic during the break, per se, is uh, Jason Terry. Yeah, that's a, he's, he's floating out there a little bit. It's a uh, possibility. Is he somebody that, I mean, yeah, he's somebody maybe the, you recommend the Wolves to, to possibly target in a trade, per se. I'm not sure if he's an actual free agent, but um, they're going to be making changes. There's oh, <laughs> Dallas. Yeah. Dallas. <laughs> Definitely. Yep, yeah, a legit possibility. They're going to go after uh, Darren Williams, like the Minnesota Wild, are going to go after Zach Parise this summer. Like, people are thinking that is, like, they're going to p- pretty much try to, like, kidnap him. Yeah, I mean, they, <laughs> you, you don't go from a champion to win, you, you don't win the championship and then get swept. I mean, mm-hmm. come on. Mm-hmm. Absolutely stomped in the first round. Like, the Lakers got swept in the second round last year by the future champion, you know, by the eventual champion. We'll say this year maybe the Thunder are the eventual champion, but in the first round, that's kind of harsh. Yeah. Yuck, you know. <laughs> At least win one game. And they, they played with no clutch ability whatsoever. Yeah. Oh, it's just sad. Mm-hmm. And the mysterious, uh, the mysterious, um, what am I saying? Yeah, the mysterious uh, offseason by the Mavericks where a lot of people were like, okay, why are they letting everybody go? Yeah. And and yeah. picking up weird, weird moves like Lamar Odom and stuff. And in, in the end, it's because there's a secret method to the madness and it's Darren Williams. It's Darren. Yeah, there you have that secret plan going after D-Will, as they call him. The one question, though, is will D-Will make them better? Because with the Nets, he did not make the Nets better at all. Um, and uh, with Utah, it seemed like they never really were that great with him. He's a great point guard, but it seems like he doesn't make anybody better. That's that's some that's a question I'm bringing up. You know, it's like, am I nuts? <laughs> Maybe, right? Yeah. You're like, yeah, Joey, you're nuts. Let's look at, just uh, taking a look at something here. I didn't know that Mo Williams... Um, doesn't make that much. Oh, that's Mo Evans. Look at you. Or we saw him in the, yeah, I mean, Mo Williams is out there too, somewhere. But he's a uh, Mo Evan. Mo Williams is kind of like a point guard, shooting guard type. He's one of those type of guys. He's a. Uh, I don't like his shot selection though. That's the one thing I don't like about him. He seems kind of bitchy to me. I could be wrong, but. He's one of those guys, he, he's another one of those guys that doesn't really make anybody better, you know? That's kind of my complaint with him, but, uh, yeah, it looked like you might, <laughs> looked like you might have been looking at Mo yeah, Evans, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 1.2 million seconds. Yeah, that's more than I don't think Mo Williams makes much either, but at the same time, he's, eh, he kind of bugs me. He's one of those guys, like, to me, Jamal Crawford has opted out of his deal, he is a UFA, as we like to call him. Nick Young, who hit some clutch shots in that 27-point comeback for the Clippers, is also a UFA. Not sure he's somebody you really jump after, yeah. but because, I mean, this team needs a Sam Mitchell, Terry Porter type. Yeah, I think we're going after uh, Gordon or Mayo first. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, I would love to get uh, Mayo. Uh, as of right now, he's a restricted free agent. Not sure if Memphis is going to give him the qualifying offer or not. It's either a qualifying offer, seven point four million for one year. That's what they call the tender, or a extension of a contract, like a legit, you know, longer deal, like Kevin Love got. Not sure that's going to happen with OJ at this point because you would have think they would have offered him some type of long term extension by yeah. now. So he just might be out of there. Uh, though, yeah, when it's restricted, you have to tender him. Uh, uh, if you're, a, you know, obviously an outside team. It's one of those uh, offer sheet deals. <laughs> yeah, I, I, would, I would like railing, but uh, not for the amount that he that he's going to um, try to get. Yeah, because I mean, he made ten million last year. I'm pretty pretty sure he's not going to get that again. No. Like we're talking <laughs> six, five and a half. Oh, I don't even think that. Yeah, it could be. I mean, it's possible, but at the, yeah, I mean, he's thirty six by now. Yeah, he's, yeah, he was born in seventy five, and I'm a that big of a fan, folks. I just know the year people are born sometimes. <laughs> he's a year older than Garnett and, and Marbury and all those guys, but um, he 
yeah, he's 36, and he was he's kind of getting into the damaged goods department now. He's good, obviously, and we know it, but he's in a, yeah, he's a little bit damaged, I think, at this point in his career. All kinds of free agents, though, man. Yeah, I actually think we should, you know, offer Eric Gordon, you know, just basically, Some, you know, a max type deal. Because that's the only way we're going to prime away from New Orleans. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, you're probably looking, yeah, maybe ten million. Yeah, ten million. That's the only way. Four years. You have to do four because if you give him five, Kellen Love is going to say, you know what? Oh, that's yeah. it. That's it. <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing. They really made a mistake with that. That I think they blew it doing that to him. Oh boy, I really hope the Wolves didn't didn't start like something with Kevin Love by doing that. I actually think I think they oh, I don't man. think it was that easy. I think they must they must have talked to him about it. I hope so. It must have Ooh, been something so. like you know, uh, uh, you know. Well, if you know, if we're better than we are now after four years, then we'll go ahead and give you the five. Mm-hmm. You that know. could be. It's a player uh, The fourth year is a player option, so in a lot of ways it could be a three-year deal. Kind of scary. That's the scary part, where if, if he's really unhappy, we could be in trouble. Yeah, but I think if, uh, you know, Rubio doesn't get injured, his injury doesn't really his game that much, I, th- I yeah. think will stay. I think after that, then we'll say, would, okay, now we'll give you the five. Mm-hmm. If you want to stay here, we'll give you the five. Yeah, because the good news is he doesn't seem unhappy. So yeah. that's the good part. He, he, he does not give you that uh, impression. Yeah, and if we get say, uh, you know, Eric Gordon and Jerry Wallace, I don't think their wow. personalities. Yeah. If we got OJ Mayo, I think they would kind of. Well, if we got like a, a Westbrook. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, just with personality yeah. wise. Yeah. I think it would make Style. Love uncomfortable because I think Love is the type of type that wants to be the top dog. Yeah. I what? think that he wants this to be his team. Mm-hmm. And if we get like a OJ, you know, a uh, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not too sure about Mayo. Yeah, he's he, he's not in a position that he can really yeah. demand to be the star somewhere right now. I think we got Westbrook. He would be that yeah, way. That yeah. would kind of mess things up. Mm-hmm. He'd be like Marbury. He definitely reminds me of Marbury. Yeah, because if you know if there's last you know t- five seconds left and Westbrook jacks up a shot mm. and Kevin's wide open, I think Kevin Love's type that will get mad, and pout about it, and want to mm-hmm. leave. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if it happened too many times, he'll say, "I'm done with this." You know. Mm-hmm. I'm He'd probably yell your, too. I'm giving you your two, your two years notice. Ooh. You know, I think he's that type of guy because that last game, uh, not the last game that he played, um, I, f- I forgot which game, but we lost and he just walked off the court. He oh didn't say, yeah, he didn't say anything to the teammates. He just walked off the court. Oh yeah, that was the that was that heartbreaking. Uh, it was a double overtime like insane game against uh, Oklahoma, yeah, right? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. That was that crazy game. He shake Durant's hand, and he just walked off the court. So I definitely think that he's that type. If he gets his feelings hurt, mm-hmm. he's gone. It doesn't go over too well. Yeah, so I think if we get like a Ray Allen, Eric Gordon, he, Eric Gordon seemed like the uh, that type of personality in uh, Wallace. Mm-hmm. I think Wallace, Wallace oh, will, will yeah. help and in, uh, enforce stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, what Kevin Love says. Or I don't think he'll try to... I don't think he'll try to um, become the the leader of the... I don't, I don't know about Jerry Wallace. I think he will, but not in a way that it'll make Kevin Love too uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And I hate the fact that I gotta... You know, you have to think, oh, we gotta make him really comfortable or he'll leave, you know, because he's yeah. that kind of... That would suck. Kinda guy. Mm-hmm. I would hope it doesn't turn into that. You know, I mean... Uh, I mean, they're, they're, that's a good point you bring up with uh, Gerald Wallace. See, I, I think, yeah, he'd be the kind of leader like the Sam Mitchell type where he's not trying to be top dog, but he is that veteran leader in the locker room yeah, that yeah. the Wolves do not have because it's not Berea. You know, Berea yeah. wants wants to be that, but <laughs> it's just not him. I think Berea is a little bit too abrasive to be a, a team captain, you know? Yeah, is that plus, <laughs> you know, is he... His numbers aren't showing it. He doesn't, you know, if, mm-hmm. if you're that type of guy and you're the point guard, yeah, you know, it's not going to go over well with the team because, you know, he's not going to pass on the ball because he thinks mm-hmm. they're not doing anything. It's just, mm-hmm. it's, yeah, it's a bad situation. Yeah, it's, it's, he's, he's got some talent, but, I mean, again, like I said earlier in the year, he's good with the uh, the underneath type stuff, but if he's jacking up shots, we're in, you know, we're dead. Like his, yeah, his passing statistics were really high later in the year, but it's like, it's just kind of, as you like called, time. yeah, it's like when you called Boozer last year, empty stats. 
I remember you called Michael, uh, Michael, you called, uh, yeah, you called Boozer. <laughs> I think you called Boozer that last year. Remember that? In like an like episode last year, I think it was yeah. the State of the Wolves, you said it's like empty stats with him. And, uh, yeah, I think it's, it was kind of empty stats with uh, J.J. Barea in April. Yeah, I actually think uh, J- uh, Barea might be uh, another guy who's traded. It's possible. I mean, granted, the one thing with him, it's like... He, you could, or I mean, I'm sure they wouldn't. They wouldn't mind the thought of it, just because you know they need to make changes. Sometimes addition by subtraction. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't hate Berea, but I don't really. I'm not really on board with him either. But the one problem is his contract has still got three years left, and yeah. it's he's, he's overpriced, and everybody knew it. Like they signed him because they wanted to get a, they wanted to get somebody with with a ring on their finger in the room. Yeah. And. Yeah, he is that, but I think it made him a little bit too too big for his britches. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think it did a little bit, right? I, I think someone would, would take him. I, I definitely think someone would take him. But I think we would probably get a bad contract in return. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I would... An Elden Brand Bray's type contract. <laughs> yeah, with, with Bray's personality, I wouldn't want... I, I wouldn't want him on team right now. Mm-hmm. I like... I think uh, uh, Tolliver... Yes. He's kind of a you know good locker room guy, mm-hmm. but Berea, I, I think he needs to go. It's yeah, I mean, I I certainly wouldn't shed a tear if Berea was traded. I, I certainly wouldn't. I mean, Luke Ridnour fits the role better than Berea. Yeah, and I, it's hard to believe I'm saying that, but no, he f- that was like a marriage in heaven with uh, Berea. Uh, what's his name, Luke and Adelman. It just seemed to work really good. Yeah, and another thing with Berea too. I mean, if we try to get Eric Gordon, there's no miss for Berea. Anyway, mm-hmm. I mean, if you got you know, Rubio and the Ridenauer and Lee, and and by looks of it, you no, know, Adam and likes Lee. For the looks of it, yeah. And so that doesn't leave much, you know, many minutes for uh, Barrera anyway. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it'd be a log jam. Yeah. It, it would. I mean, it's like there's too many point guards and power forwards on the roster, and small forward is iffy because, yeah, there's a lot of small forwards that they suck. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the Webster, Beasley. Uh, what's his face? Oh, that guy. You know, Wesley Johnson, trio. You got those sucky guys. Play. You know that could play those positions. But, um, yeah, there's just too many undersized. You know, want to be shooting guard, point guards like the Bereas and stuff. And, and Malcolm Lee is kind of a. He's a. It's like he's a point guard, but I don't see floor general in him. Honestly, when I saw him play, he seems too timid to be a floor general. Oh, so far, I could be talking a little too too out of place when I say that, but just my the visual evidence tells me he's kind of he's got a long way to go. But but he's he's, he's his defensive prowess definitely. Yeah, there's a spot for him in the league, I think, because of that. Maybe maybe he can develop into like a baby Crawford someday. I I hope. Yeah. That's what I hope. He could be kind of a baby Crawford. Well, my biggest hope is a uh, baby Wade. <laughs> oh, that'd be funny. <laughs> baby Wade. <laughs> that would be a hell of a draft pick. Uh, 37th <laughs> overall, turning into a baby Wade. That'd be pretty awesome. You got Grant Hill. There's your team leader. Oh, yeah. Just don't tell people that uh, their moves on the court are G-A-Y. No, I'm just kidding. Because <laughs> he'll be like, oh, hey, not in my house. Okay, I'm sorry. I had to make fun of that commercial because it's like the most overplayed commercial ever. But um, <laughs> Batum's another guy. I like. Batum. Batum. Oh yeah, yeah of course. He's another guy who we have to offer Max deal to just. To, you know. <laughs> Ooh, not quite that much. Look at you. Uh, uh, you think so? That high? Well, they'll Maybe not I'll, max, I'll, but yeah, I'm thinking they'll pretty much match whatever until you know it's, it's too much. Until it's like stupid, right? Yeah. Like like eleven, twelve million. <laughs> yeah, then I'll say, all right, you can go ahead and take him. Yeah, he's. I wonder what. I, I'm 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 kind of uh, iffy with him. He's good, but it seems like he's just not. I don't know if he's ever going to really develop into something like super good. He's he's a little up and down for my liking. He he certainly has a uh, physical talent. There's no doubt about yeah. it. He's. You could say he's kind of right now a poor man's Wallace, yeah, which is right. good, a, a good thing. But maybe the highest I'd go is about when Wallace made was nine point five. That'd be the absolute highest. I'm thinking when you think of Batum, he's kind of a combo 
he's a he's a swing man. There we go. That's basically what Batum is, isn't it? Yeah. Though he's a, maybe a little bit long for shooting guard, but he kind of plays like one. <laughs> it's kind of about right, say, with him. You got Damian Wilkins out there. There you go. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, there's a lot of guys, a lot of stiffs out there. <laughs> there's a lot of intriguing guys as well, of course. Gerald Wallace, oh, man. I think he'd have a hard time turning down 9.5, but maybe, maybe because the Nets stink. Yeah. And it depends on where they're going. It depends on when he has to decide. I I think, yeah, I'm sure he'd have to decide before um, he would have to decide before free agency starts. Sometime in June, I think, on his player option. I I think he's probably talking to Darren. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, just see what he's doing. Mm-hmm. And yeah, because they're not getting Dwight, so that's the other thing. So they're not going to be good next year. Not going to be too good. Again, our both of our feelings of Dwight were probably well known by now. <laughs> the stu- stupid man, we should call him. No, basically instead of Superman. I mean, yeah, there's all kinds of intriguing free agents out there. Um, we, you know, you look at centers like Chris Kamen. He's not a guy I would. Uh, he's too injury prone. He's underachieved. Yeah. You know, I, I, I think Pekovic, but Pekovic might turn into that too. <laughs> I'm afraid of that. Yeah, we, we definitely heard a lot. a defensive center to uh, uh, complement uh, Love's lack of defense. Yeah, we need it badly. And, you know, in the, the small forward position, people would say we'd like to believe that Wesley Johnson is a good defender, but his, his perimeter defense was pretty sucky. Yeah. He gave up so many threes. Oh, uh, McGee would be great. Mm-hmm. McGee, that'd be cool. For restricted free agent, um, depends on where Denver's standing with that. I yeah. think he's done okay, but but yeah, you know Wesley Johnson, he gives up three point shots about as much as the Twins pitching staff gives up home runs this year, and that's a lot, ladies and gentlemen. That's uh, horrendous. Like we're talking thousands, you know. <laughs> okay, that's a bit crazy, but you get the idea. We're really hitting the <laughs> we're really hitting the free agent pool here. Uh, yeah, I just saw your eyes pop out of your head. Yeah, Hashim <laughs> Hashim to beat. No, the re- the reason why his salary was semi high is because he was the he was the number two overall pick. So two, yeah. yeah, like rookie contracts go up to like about five million a year when you're in the top two or so. So that's the deal. The song. <laughs> The Sagna Jop, I have Jop, I guess. I have no idea why he got so much. Yeah. About $7 million. I His contract must have been long because... And he got a player option, too. That's funny. I mean, yeah. I, <laughs> and it's like, I know this is just kind of random. I mean, it's partially because, you know, we're trying to be entertaining as well because we can be, right? We're, we're, we're trying, right? Wow. You look at that. I have no idea what the general manager... I don't know if it was Charlotte that signed him, because he's probably been traded a thousand times. Yeah, yeah, he's been on a lot of different teams. Mm -hmm. Based on Michael Jordan's personnel decision-making skills, I think he did sign a song after that. Because not only is he making... Did he make $7 million this year, and potentially seven point four next year, it's not a team option, folks. It is a player option. Oh, he's taking it. There's no doubt. You think he's taking it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, wow. the the guy is the guy in it. His team to beat and Desagna Jop have the same talent level, which is minimal, absolutely minimal, at best. Yeah, Marcus yeah. Camby made a uh, twelve million. Twelve million dollars. Yep, yep. But he was here thirteen actually. But he was pretty good. He was a pretty good player over the course of time. But uh, I'm not sure how far he is at this point in his career. So with that, if there's uh, if there's nothing to add with free agency, right at this no. point. So um, really, we just hope the Wolves do just do the best they can here. They can. There's lots of options out there. We hope that we can lure somebody here. There's going to be changes. The team will be better next year. I got to think, provided they all stay healthy. But yeah, especially when we're making uh, changes. Yep, there's going to be a lot going on. We have options. We have salary cap space, about 11 to $14 million, up to 16 I think, depending yeah. on how many people we get, we get rid of. But, and, um, amnesty. and Amnesty, yep, that's probably going to happen. That's another $5 million plus coming off. You got uh, 5.4 with uh, 
Web 5.7 with Web Serial and about 5.5-ish with Darko. So that'll free up a lot of space. And then, <clears throat> uh, well, speaking of players leaving, Brad Miller, it's uh, it's it's going to be a career for him. Uh, he didn't really play much this year, but lots of memories with him over the years with Chicago, Indiana, Sacramento. Um, yeah. It's a long, long run for him. Remember, he was uh, there was a lot going on with him versus the Wolves in the Sacramento uh, series years ago in Game Seven. That was pretty cool, yeah. seven game series. Lots of history for Brad Miller. Um, he had a tearful exit. Rick, Ricky, Rick, Rick Adelman, excuse me. Nice enough to give him extended playing time in the season yeah. finale. That yeah. was very cool, wasn't it? Yeah, well, yeah, well. <clears throat> and of course, we know who Rick Adelman coached. <laughs> when the Wolves did that seven-game series against Sacramento, and, of course, it was the Kings. So a very strong ties between Adelman and Brad Miller over the years. So <clears throat> anything you want to say about Brad on his way out? Yeah, we appreciate you having you here. <laughs> yep, I mean, that's about it, isn't it? I mean, it's been a it's been a nice career. Appreciate the competition over the years, too, right? Yeah. I mean, good competition for the Wolves over the years and other things, but... Yeah, I mean, well, good luck to Brad Miller and the rest of his, uh, his 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 next career. We'll say, who knows if he'll be a broadcaster or a coach? We'll see. But the guy definitely was a was a good player in the league. Uh, at times, chippy because he's physical, but hey, worthwhile NBA player. And best of luck in your future. So, with that, if there's anything else you want to close with? No. So with that, we are going to call it a show. It's been another fantastic effort. Good job tonight, Marcus. And uh, the <laughs> if you're playing the review in the background here, you can maybe hear it a little bit, but not not really intended to be played. I, or, uh, you know, per- perfect uh, sound effects or anything. But there he goes. And that's uh, real quick. We'll get to the contact details. Timberwolves Explosion, which is available on the sportstuff.com and iTunes. Please uh, please do join the message boards on the sportstuff.com. Simply click on the button that says TSS Boards, then click register, and uh, there you go. Get your screen name, sign up on those message boards, talk with a lot of different basketball experts and fans and all that on there on the webpage. Very fun indeed to get involved with something like that. Do get on there and start the conversation with the Rusties and PMAX of the world. They also do a show on the sportsstuff.com called The Crossover, which covers the New Jersey Nets and New York Knicks. An awesome listen. Do highly recommend that show indeed. That's, of course, on iTunes, if I didn't mention that already 20 times, but <laughs> I apologize if I did. Uh, don't forget about the Facebook page for Timberwolves Explosion. Simply look up Timberwolves Explosion on there. Click on the one that says Company, not Group. Then click like. Also, the Twitter account, twitter.com forward slash Wolves Explosion, and twitter.com forward slash NBA Forecaster. That's Marcus the Forecaster's Twitter as well. Do uh, follow those if you could. Would be well well appreciated. There's also the call-in line, which is a voicemail, which is 209-736-7877. 209-736-7877. It is a voicemail. Do leave... Uh, do mention what show you're calling into, which is Wolves, Timberwolves Explosion. Uh, leave your question, shout out, comment, whatever it is, and we'll play it on the air with us. It will be very cool, interact as well. So until next time, we're going to bid adieu, and, uh, well, the next show will most likely be the State of the Timberwolves, which is every year the great classic. We'll talk about the draft when the time comes. That will all be on that show, and deeper free agent conversation and an NBA final review and all that type of stuff. So until then, take care.